In late 2025, Plug Power announced the commissioning of a 5-megawatt green hydrogen facility in Namibia. In an industry dominated by gigawatt-scale ambitions and export-driven megaprojects, the announcement barely registered outside specialist circles. 5 megawatts doesn't sound transformative in a world obsessed with scale, but that reaction misses the point. This project was never about headline capacity. It was about something far more fundamental, whether a complete green hydrogen system can actually work in the real world. Green hydrogen has struggled not because the chemistry is wrong, but because the systems surrounding it have been incomplete. Electricity, storage, electrolyzers, operations, distribution, and end use are often discussed separately, as if they naturally align once built. In practice, they rarely do. Plug Power's decision to build a relatively small but fully integrated hydrogen system in Namibia suggests a strategic shift away from chasing size toward validating system coherence. At the center of this project is a simple but demanding question. Can renewable electricity be converted into hydrogen reliably, predictably, and safely without relying on an existing grid or future infrastructure promises? The Namibia facility attempts to answer that question by combining solar generation, battery energy storage, electrolysis, hydrogen handling, and refueling in a single off-grid system designed to operate under real operational constraints. Namibia is not an obvious choice if the goal were short-term commercial returns. But if the goal is system validation, it makes sense. The country has abundant solar resources, growing interest in hydrogen for mobility and logistics, and locations where hydrogen demand can be geographically concentrated. These characteristics allow a hydrogen system to be tested where demand and supply can be physically and operationally linked, rather than abstractly modeled. One of the most important design choices in this project is the decision to operate off-grid. Grid-connected hydrogen systems benefit from power stability, but inherit grid constraints, congestion, and price volatility. Off-grid systems face the opposite challenge. They must create their own stability. Solar output varies continuously. Without buffering and control, hydrogen production would be erratic, unsuitable for any application that requires reliability. By integrating battery storage directly into the system, Plug Power is addressing this challenge at the system level, rather than treating it as an afterthought. The battery in this configuration is not merely an energy reservoir. It functions as a control mechanism. It smooths power delivery to the electrolyzer, mitigates short-term variability, and enables operational decisions that protect equipment and maintain output quality. This matters because electrolyzers are not indifferent to how they are operated. Ramp rates, load profiles, and operating consistency affect efficiency, degradation, and maintenance cycles. A hydrogen system that ignores these realities pays for it in reduced utilization and higher effective costs. The electrolyzer itself sits at the center of the system, but it does not define the system. In many hydrogen discussions, electrolyzer selection is treated as the primary determinant of success. In practice, electrolyzers perform well or poorly depending on the environment they are placed in. Plug Power's approach suggests an understanding that electrolyzers need to be supported by stable power electronics, storage, and control logic if they are to deliver reliable hydrogen output. From an economic perspective, this is crucial. Hydrogen cost is not simply a function of capital expenditure and electricity price. It is a function of utilization. Capital-intensive assets become affordable only when they are used consistently. An electrolyzer that operates sporadically, even if powered by cheap electricity, produces expensive hydrogen. An electrolyzer that operates predictably, even with higher electricity costs, can deliver more competitive economics. System design determines which outcome prevails. The Namibia project also addresses another persistent weakness in hydrogen development, the gap between production and use. Many hydrogen facilities are designed without clear, near-term demand. They assume that markets will appear once supply exists. History suggests the opposite. Demand appears when supply is reliable, accessible, and operationally compatible with existing systems. Plug Power's facility includes hydrogen handling and refueling infrastructure intended to support mobility and equipment use. 
This closes the loop between production and consumption. Hydrogen mobility, particularly in logistics, ports, and heavy equipment, is often discussed in abstract terms. In practice, it requires tight coordination between fueling schedules, vehicle availability, maintenance regimes, and operational safety procedures. A hydrogen production facility that cannot deliver fuel when needed undermines adoption regardless of its theoretical emissions benefits. By locating production and refueling together, the Namibia system reduces logistical complexity and creates a controlled environment in which hydrogen use can be operationalized. This approach also reflects a pragmatic understanding of early-stage hydrogen markets. Large export projects depend on pipelines, shipping infrastructure, and international offtake agreements that take years to materialize. Localized hydrogen systems serving defined use cases can demonstrate value sooner. They create operational experience, generate data, and build confidence among users. That confidence is a prerequisite for scaling. Another important aspect of this project is its modularity. A 5 megawatt system is large enough to expose real technical and operational challenges, but small enough to adapt and iterate. Problems discovered at this scale can be corrected without catastrophic cost overruns. Lessons learned can be applied to subsequent installations. This iterative approach contrasts sharply with mega projects that attempt to solve every problem at once and often struggle under their own complexity. From a systems perspective, the Namibia facility functions as a microcosm of the broader hydrogen ecosystem. Solar generation introduces variability. Batteries introduce control. Electrolyzers convert energy carriers. Storage and refueling connect production to use. Each component is necessary but insufficient on its own. Only when they are designed to work together does the system become viable. This has direct implications for fuel cell deployment. Fuel cells are often described as ready technologies waiting for hydrogen supply. But supply readiness is not binary. It depends on consistency, purity, pressure, and availability. A hydrogen system that meets these requirements enables fuel cells to operate as intended. A system that fails to meet them turns fuel cells into unreliable assets. The Namibia project, by focusing on integrated delivery, addresses this dependency explicitly. There is also a strategic dimension to plug power's involvement. By participating across multiple layers of the hydrogen value chain, plug power reduces interface risk. Interface risk arises when multiple vendors, contractors, and operators must coordinate across poorly defined boundaries. Delays, performance disputes, and misaligned incentives often occur at these interfaces. Integrated system delivery, while more demanding up front, can reduce long-term operational risk if executed competently. However, integration does not guarantee success. Integrated systems can fail spectacularly if control logic, maintenance capability, or operational discipline is lacking. The true test of the Namibia facility will not be its commissioning, but its sustained operation. Can it maintain uptime across seasons? Can it deliver hydrogen consistently under variable solar conditions? Can it support refueling operations without excessive downtime? These questions determine whether the system is economically and environmentally meaningful. Sustainability in this context is not a label applied at commissioning. It is an outcome measured over time. An off-grid green hydrogen system that reliably displaces fossil fuels in mobility or operations delivers genuine emissions reductions. A system that operates intermittently or requires frequent backup undermines its own purpose. Sustainability emerges from performance, not intent. The Namibia project also highlights a broader lesson for hydrogen policy and investment. Ambitious capacity targets are easy to announce. Functional systems are harder to build. Policymakers and investors should pay close attention to projects that demonstrate integration rather than scale alone. These projects generate the operational knowledge required to make larger deployments viable. For developers considering green hydrogen projects, the takeaway is clear. Focus on system design early. Power sourcing, storage strategy, electrolyzer operation, and demand alignment must be considered together. 
Treating these elements separately leads to misalignment that shows up later as cost overruns, underutilization, or operational failure. For investors, the project underscores the importance of execution risk. Technology risk in hydrogen is declining. Execution risk remains high. Projects that demonstrate disciplined integration reduce that risk, even if they are smaller in scale. Revenue may be modest initially, but credibility grows. For end users, particularly those considering fuel cell adoption, the Namibia system offers a glimpse of what reliable hydrogen supply could look like. Not as a distant future infrastructure promise, but as a local operational reality. That shift from promise to practice is what ultimately drives adoption. It is also worth noting what this project does not claim to be. It does not claim to solve global hydrogen economics. It does not claim to make hydrogen universally competitive overnight. It does not rely on speculative future infrastructure. Its ambition is narrower and therefore more credible to prove that an integrated green hydrogen system can operate reliably in a real environment. In the broader context of the energy transition, such projects play a critical role. They bridge the gap between laboratory success and industrial deployment. They expose assumptions to reality. They reveal which constraints matter most. And they create a foundation on which larger systems can be built with greater confidence. Ultimately, Plug Power's 5-megawatt green hydrogen system in Namibia is important, not because of its size, but because of its completeness. It treats hydrogen as a system problem rather than a component problem. It recognizes that sustainability depends on execution, not announcements. And it acknowledges that the path to scale runs through reliability. If green hydrogen and fuel cells are to play a meaningful role in decarbonization, they must move beyond isolated demonstrations toward integrated systems that work day after day. Projects like this show what that transition looks like in practice. And that is why this relatively small hydrogen hub deserves attention. Not as a symbol of future potential, but as a test of whether the systems behind green hydrogen are finally beginning to hold together.